On our panel, we have Tom Chandler. He's the head of betting and gaming for Ucash. We have Tiago Cumbra Dominguez, who's a partner manager for international distribution at Ucash. Jackie Becker, who is the head of acquisition at Ray8. Robin Reed, the CEO of Donker. And John Hagen, who's a partner at Harris Hagen. Um, if you wanted to each say a little bit about yourselves, uh, we'll start immediately after that. Sure. Why don't you start, Tom? Um, so yeah, my, my role uh, essentially is to manage the gambling business for UCash, um, both from, from sales, uh, account development, and, uh, and marketing side as well. So I work with our internal marketing team um, to try and, to grow, try and grow our, our key accounts essentially. Um, that's why we're here this week. Um, I'll go through that a little bit more in the presentation. Uh, but hopefully we can work together with a lot of you guys uh, to try and convert your, uh, your cash business, convert the traffic that uh, previously uh, you're missing out on. Hi, um, I'm Thiago from Ucash. I, as announced or introduced, I run Latin America and Iberia for Ucash on a country or territory basis. I work very close, closely with Tom as well as our other sectors within Ucash, so uh, the, the gaming as such and the, the e-commerce and things like that. Uh, my main specialty is to run primarily the uh, issuing side, so I'm responsible for opening these new markets in Latin America, make Ucash available at points of sale for the consumer, and uh, any questions relating to where we are at in any of these countries, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, hi, I'm Amir. Yeah, I'm Jackie Becker. I'm a consultant uh, currently marketing um, Ray 8, which is a playtech poker and casino brand into the Latin American market. Um, working very closely with Tiago and Tom in Argentina currently. Um, my name is uh, Robin, and I'm the CEO of Rocker International Limited, a company running a poker community. Um, we are facing the North European markets, uh, Germany and Eastern European markets. Um, my name's John Hagen. Um, I'm a lawyer, which is maybe why they've put me separate from the rest of the panel. Uh, I'm from Harris Hagen. We're a, a, a UK law firm uh, specializing exclusively in gambling law. Um, I haven't been to the affiliates conference before, usually at operators' conferences, and um, it's, it's great to be here. Uh, nice to see a vibrant industry um, enjoying itself, and um, it's great to be here. Um, so, as I say, we, we, we're going to focus on um, how, how we think we can use prepaid products in grey, unregulated markets. Namely, we're going to use the two examples of uh, Norway and Argentina to start with. Um, these are just examples. It's, it's not exhaustive. We can look into any territory on a one-by-one a, on a, on a one basis. Um, but first of all, I suppose um, a lot of you will have seen Ucash plastered about the conference but still don't know actually what we do. Uh, so I'll go through that first. I'll go through the business model uh, that we've put together so hopefully that we can make money, you can make money, the operators can make money as well. Um, and then I'll go through the tools that we're putting together um, to, to, uh, to give to you guys, to give to the actual operators themselves. Uh, so first of all, what is Ucash? Um, many of you will know already what, what we do. Essentially, uh, in a bit more detail there, but we allow players to use cash online. Uh, it's a typical business model is we'll have a point of sale in any given country. A customer goes in, gives them their cash. In return for that cash, they get a voucher with a unique 19-digit voucher code. They take that voucher code to the cashier of the operator and, uh, and they deposit. It's, it's a cash payment. There's no chargebacks involved. Um, and it's, as I say, it's very, very useful for emerging markets, places like Latin America where cash is still king. Uh, there's problems with fraud, there's problems with the banking infrastructure. People uh, can't deposit online, typically as they would in Western Europe. There's <coughs> a bit more information there about our, our global presence. Um, so we operate in just over 30 countries uh, for gambling. Um, 
overall we do 52 countries, but these are 18 plus vouchers. So if you want to deposit on a gambling site, um, obviously there's some, some Arab countries missing there that, uh, that, that we only sell under 18 vouchers, telecoms, etc. Um, we've got the voucher values there um, and a, a little bit more uh, information about the payouts um, as well as the redemption, standard redemption model. Um, you can withdraw back now to your cash voucher as well. Uh, quite broad this, quite generic, but um, here's some, uh, some, some of the perceptions of, of online payments and why people uh, don't really want to integrate anything else but than credit or debit cards, wallets. 90% um, of the potential online market, so there's no, no need for alternatives. Certainly not the case in, in Argentina, certainly not the case in Norway, Germany. And that's for various reasons, whether it be cultural, whether it's uh, legal restrictions, whether it's uh, economic, um, it really is on a country by country basis. This illustrates that uh, once again. I mean, the UK, uh, UK, we got there what uh, around 60%, um, and the UK, even though even though there's relatively high credit card penetration, it's uh, it's still one of our biggest markets. Um, so if, if we can do well in, in the UK, where there's, there's uh, you know, high propensity to use cards online, um, some of these grey markets where uh, there, there is real problems with uh, getting, getting your money onto a gambling site is where we can really, um, is where you can really uh, push the product. <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is just a, a simple illustration. It's not specific to gambling, um, but it, it, it just illustrates basically the, the customer journey. Um, and where we can help. So this, this last stage at the end here, payment confirmation and purchase 100% made. This is where your cash players, if you're, if you're an affiliate driving traffic to a gambling website, if they don't have a card, if they don't have the means to deposit, this is where they're going to drop off. Um, as I say, it's not gambling specific, it's for, for all industries. Um, but it just illustrates where we can, where we can help you guys. A couple of reasons here why to, why to, to, to promote the, the prepaid options. Um, as I say, we've used the, used the, uh, used the examples of Norway and Argentina. Um, high risk of fraud, I've mentioned. Uh, Cash-based solutions reduce the need for disclosure of sensitive information. So you go into a store and buy a cash voucher. Um, it's done through simplified due diligence. You don't have to to give your details, you don't have to give any financial uh, or sensitive information across to the shopkeeper and then when you deposit, um, the KYC is done again by, by the operator themselves. <coughs> uh, Norway specifically, obviously there's the, um, the block, lock on, on, on gambling transactions by some financial institutions, so uh, that's a legal reason that we can, uh, that, that why, why prepaid methods particularly work in Norway. Argentina, we've mentioned low low card penetration, um, poor payment infrastructure compared with uh, compared with Western Europe, for example, and, and also the the huge growth at the moment in uh, internet penetration, in, in particularly Argentina and Brazil. Um, and the points of sale, last the points of sale need to be apparent to the customer, so it's no use us integrating with an operator um, if if the guy if the the, the punter doesn't know we're there. Uh, we need to we need to re really market our uh, points of sale. <clears throat> this page, um, I suppose it goes back to the conversion funnel a couple of slides ago that illustrates it specifically for gambling. So your punter comes through uh, through the site to the deposit page and then when they can't deposit there's a drop off. Uh, they don't convert. Um, and this is where we want to uh, come in but also take it one step back and work with affiliates, uh, work with operators uh, to try and convert them effectively before they've reached the deposit page. <clears throat> so what we've done is uh, essentially we, we, we're looking to become the middleman between affiliates and their and operators and affiliates. Um, we, we've put together a model that ensures that the cost of the operator are covered, the cost of us are covered and the cost for, for you guys are covered as well. Um, we'll do that on a country by country basis. We'll, we've created, uh, we've created a, a, a UCash Affiliates page. So you can go on there and you can find localised content uh, country by country. 
um, a localised landing page with each operator will be built um, and make, make sure it's presented relevant. So uh, an Argentinian uh, customer goes onto, um, goes onto your site, the IP is tracked and then there's a, a localised banner that, that crops up with the offer, then you click through to the landing page, the guy gets their voucher and then by the time they get to the, get to the actual uh, deposit page, the, the cashier of the operator, they can't not convert, they've already got their, uh, they've already got their voucher code. Then there'll be a second stage um, once they've deposited. Obviously it's not the traditional Ucash customer experience to, to get these vouchers online. Um, so we need a hook to actually get the guys into the points of sale to buy their second voucher. Um, so we're working with, with operators um, to put together this uh, call to action. So once they've actually converted, they keep on using Ucash again. They know where to go to buy the vouchers, whether in Norway, Argentina, wherever. Um, so finally, the next the next step for you guys, um, and I've I've rushed rushed through this, but if if you want more information, um, check out our affiliate page first of all, or speak directly to me. It really will be on a um, a one by one basis that we work with this because every market's different, and obviously every operator will want uh, to work differently with their affiliates. Um, essentially, the relationship will be between us and an operator. We'll give them the vouchers and they can farm them out to, uh, to all of their affiliates. Um, the process of actually um, the CPA, the rev share, I can go through with you guys, um, I suppose, after, after the panel's over. And that's it. Thank you. Essentially, individuals who are essentially individuals who are um, now going to players that they know, players that they have access to, and uh, issuing vouchers. Uh, why go that route and not just? Why don't they just take cash like they do in a traditional kind of per head bookmaker shop? Or sorry, so you well, well, um, I, I understand how online you'd want to issue. Yep vouchers from a website and mm -hmm. um, maybe print them off or whatever but obviously you need to deal with people taking cash in real life um, at that point why are your affiliates going to be then converting them into you cash vouchers for people to go online and play rather than just taking the cash and making a deposit for them essentially with their credit with a bookmaker or a casino or okay. um, a book room I think I, I understand the question basically the, the, the way that it'll work is once um, once the, the player is converted, um, there'll be a, a second offer. So there'll be, a, a, for instance, it could be a 10 euro voucher. It would be a closed loop promotional code. So um, whatever, dot com, um, by, we, we feed these closed loop promo codes out to the operator. Those vouchers don't actually hold any value and the operator will only pay for the ones that are actually deposited back in. Um, so we can give them an infinite number of codes um, and they then, when, they when the customer deposits, they cover that, the value of that voucher. And then at the end of the month, when you settle your affiliate, they'll take that value away from the affiliate payment at the end of the month. But what you've got to remember is these, uh, these, this is traffic that isn't previously converting. So it's incremental revenue for them, it's incremental revenue for us, and it will be incremental for the, for the affiliate as well. Robin, you want to add something? And thing. then I Jackie, okay. One. Jackie, Can then you Robin. Me? Yeah, just a quick thing I wanted to mention. There are. Um, relationships like that where you have an affiliate that will deposit on, on behalf and um, the problem lies in uh, you, you need to trust that person with your cash as a casino so that's one of the problems as well there are some affiliates that will pay you up front for credit but they're very hard to find so. okay. Robin? Uh, <clears throat> just adding to what Tom and Jackie are saying um, it is much more preferable to give out the UCash voucher and that is because you can actually lock that UCash voucher to only work with a <coughs> single operator Thus, if you have a customer as an affiliate and he is tracked to you and you give him a Ucash voucher that is locked to that operator, you know he is going to be de de depositing the money to your tracker link. While as if you give the guy cash, he can obviously use it everywhere. Thus, with cash, you have actually have to sit with the customer and make sure he deposits it into an account that is tracked to you. With a Ucash voucher, you can send it out. He can use it two weeks later, three weeks later. So it's much more flexible. 
Now we're talking about Ucash in in, uh, in in alternative payment methods in the cons in the context of uh, unregulated markets. Um, but I, I think what we're talking about really is a market that just does not have a huge amount of credit card penetration. I mean, it just doesn't have to be a market that blocks seven nine nine five. No, like sure, like Norway, for example. It's it's not a uh, it's not a um, it's not an economic reason that, that people don't use their cards. It's it's a, a it, it, it's a legal reason. Um, sure. And like I say, it will be on a on a. On a, each territory will have their own various different barriers to entry for deposits, um, and that we just have to look at each one, whether it's Norway, whether it's Argentina, whether it's Greece, Spain, whatever, um, and adapt the product and adapt the model uh, to suit the particular market. Now, John, there's a reason that you're on this panel. <coughs> now, when we're talking about unregulated markets, um, some people may get a little skittish or scared about yeah. some of these. We're mentioning Norway quite a bit. We're mentioning about affiliates now getting involved in a revenue share on the payment method. Uh, what additional risks are brought when, when you begin to go down this path? Well, uh, speaking personally, I had a late night last night. And uh, <laughs> looking around the room, I think maybe chances are some other people had a late night. We're talking about grey, unregulated markets, markets where uh, there are no laws relating to online gambling. There's no enforcement action being taken against operators, um, let alone against affiliates. And as a lawyer, it's so tempting just this once to say, um, don't worry about the law, just get out there and make as much money um, as you can before these, these markets are regulated. Um, but, <laughs> but of course, I can't say that. I have to throw in a caveat that the online gambling land landscape is continuing to evolve as it always has done. And, and arguably, you need to be more on top of the law than, than ever before. I, I, I think it would be useful to just, because we've heard a lot about Norway, I think that would just be a good ex example. Um, to me, Norway is not a grey market. And also, I heard some Scandinavian accents. I can't yet decipher whether they're Norwegian or from elsewhere. But uh, it's not a grey market in the, in the traditional sense, because online gambling is expressly prohibited under Norwegian law which makes it a black market as far as I'm concerned. But, but where, where, where it is grey is in relation to its regulations relating to payment processing. And a ban was introduced in Norway in, in June 2010. Um, but my understanding is, and I'm not a Norwegian lawyer, is that if the gambling transaction is happening entirely outside Norway, say for the fact that the player is in Norway, um, it's not going to contravene the law. There, there, there's, for example, there's no prohibition on a Norwegian player opening a bank account overseas, um, using that account for his gambling and to circumvent the controls. And my understanding is that the prepaid model, such as Ucash, means that the player's bank, debit card, credit card provider in Norway isn't involved in the processing of the, of the gambling transaction, or at least won't be coded as a gambling transaction, and it will avoid the blocks on processing payments. Um, so Ucash have taken their own advice, I'm, I'm sure, but it seems to me the only issue would be if you started to go into Norway in land-based premises and offer dedicated gambling vouchers for online. I think that's when you might start to have a problem with the Norwegian Ministry of Culture and Church Affairs. It's always a concern when the body regulating gambling is as culture and church in the, in, in the title. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Do we have some audience questions by this point? No? Okay, I'll keep going. Okay, good. We have a question. It makes my job easier if you guys ask questions. Uh, yeah, I'll just say that it is not really uh, correct that it's uh, prohibited uh, with uh, online gambling in Norway. It's just the money transactions that the financial institutions, they, they are not allowed to make them. So, so there's, there's really no law that prohibits uh, individuals to gamble. Okay. John, you agree? Well, um, my understanding is that, it, yeah, not, not for the individuals to gamble, but it's pretty clearly prohibited for online operators to be taking bets from, from Norwegian residents other than through uh, Norsk tipping and Norsk 
Rick's daughter. Your, your Norwegian is impeccable. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, um, you want to add something? Yeah, I'm actually from Norway. I'm living in Malta uh, now, though, partially because of this. Um, I think the term unregulated markets is it needs to uh, we need to define it a little bit because as a matter of fact uh, for instance Norway is far from unregulated as uh, you're touching um, there is two things that is regulated and that is what you can do as a gaming company in terms of marketing and transactions while it is completely true that a uh, Norwegian bank is not allowed to transfer money into an online gaming operator they have blocked the code which is associated with gambling for transactions um, it is not true that a, you know, we, uh, that a company is not allowed to take Norwegian customers. In fact, uh, if you are offering your services in different languages and a Norwegian customer finds you and he manages to get money in there without using a Norwegian bank, you are not doing anything wrong. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah. What is uh, very clearly regulated though is the marketing you can do. And this is how they sort of try to uh, influence the market. In Norwegian law, there is a lottery and gaming law which has a paragraph called the marketing paragraph 6.2 which uh, states that you are not allowed to market towards Norwegians uh, at the Norwegian territory. Then you might discuss whether uh, marketing online at the dot-com site, for instance, is marketing towards Norwegians at their territory. But what is clear is that you, for instance, cannot send a physical voucher in their email, uh, to their uh, Norwegian mailbox, for instance. And we are dealing in many markets where they are using the same kind of uh, principle. It's called a territorial principle, um, and basically that seems to me like it applies more or less everywhere. And the customer for Germany would be allowed to find a international book and signed up and deposit and so on. I also, I just wanted to um, go ahead, Jackie. Mention, mention something about Argentina because you can actually buy a license in Misiones, so there is some regulation. That means that a player can deposit within Misiones and an operator can do advertising, TV advertising within that province. Um, my acquisition strategy is under the radar. If you do do TV advertising and you're doing blatant advertising in Buenos Aires, you're going to get a fine. PokerStars have been fined, um, 888 have been fined and Victor Chandler exited the market for this, for this reason. So we are talking, yeah, we, we, I mean, now we're talking about promoting in a re regulated markets, which is actually our title. So let's pick a few markets. Uh, let, let's go through Latin America. Tell me what number of transactions are you seeing through Latin America um, on, uh, on Ucash? And let's choose some markets where penetration of credit cards is not very high. Uh, so let's take, say, Brazil. Let's take Argentina. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Argentina, well, the, first of all, the territory is, uh, in general, is very, very difficult. Um, there are huge restrictions on a country-by-country -country basis, first of all, with getting the money out, which is crucial if you're going to settle or you want to settle to the, to the operators. Um, having said that, it's not, just, you know, it's, it's not like one problem fits every single country in the region. Then you have other barriers, all sorts, um, be it with legislation, be it with commissions, uh, which are agreeable and acceptable. It's, uh, it's a minefield. Um, and then there's also I'm sorry if there's any Latin America people uh, present, but there's al also the culture of mañana. Everything is mañana. So uh, it, things take a long time to happen as well. Um, be it the licensing in certain countries, be it the, the issuing of Ucash. I can tell you we've got in Argentina at the moment, we are only issuing Ucash um, at points of sale in eight shops. Yes, eight. In the whole country? Only in Buenos Aires. <coughs> no, we have no no, no other issue other than the eight shops in Buenos Aires. But with eight shops, we are doing six figures a month. Um, in, uh, so, okay, so you're doing six figures in the number of um, transactions no, or six of, figures in the no. total volume of money? I wish money. it was transactions, but no, it's uh, total okay. value uh, at the moment. The good news is um, I've been promised by our um, local partner that we will be expanding our issuing network to go nationwide within 48 hours, as of Monday. Uh, now, what we will see is that with um, about 130 shops, uh, highly visible uh, branded shops, they will be on our website, they will be pushed in other channels. And even the main operators have been looking forward for this because with, even with 130 shops in Argentina, we will see huge amounts of volume. Um, obviously, the main benefit 
I would say, because you can, you can argue that, okay, it's not great, it's only 120 shops, it's, it's a pretty big country, but people are contacting Ucash, the consumer contacts Ucash on a daily basis, asking why can't I get Ucash in Cordoba or Santa Fe or... So the market is there, we can settle, more importantly, outside the country, which, is, which makes us, I think, uh, the only, I would say, the only payment method for online and gambling um, that can settle unlimited funds every month. I know our main competitors, for example, they, they are very limited at, uh, in, the, in the amount of cash that they can actually get out of Argentina because it's, it's debt uh, restricted. It's very difficult. And how about a country like Brazil? Brazil, uh, again, it's uh, kind of mañana as well, but it's, they say it amanhã. Um, we only issue online. Uh, it's not uh, the greatest of processes or consumer experience at the moment and uh, it's, it's exactly my job right now for Ucash to, to, to launch Ucash at points of sale. It's a, it's a very appetizing territory for everyone, be it you guys, the affiliates, be it the, the merchants and for Ucash of course. Uh, I don't have an ETA. Um, it will definitely happen this year, this calendar year. And when it does, it will be very much, I mean, we, we won't be talking about 100 or 200 or 500 or 5,000 shops. We'll be talking 100,000 points of sale, 80,000 points of sale in, in, with, with one, with one um, <coughs> issuing partner. It's, there are some really big distribution companies there. Uh, I can tell there's one that owns about 260,000 terminals in shops. There's another one I'm talking to that holds 160,000. So the launch will be in 2012. It's, uh, it's very difficult or near impossible to tell you which half or which quarter, but um, it will happen this year. Okay, so uh, Jackie and Robin, we're talking about, again, promoting. Um, so when you're promoting in certain markets where you know there's not going to be a huge use of credit card or prohibited use of credit cards or perhaps a low penetration of credit cards, um, do you then promote along with the casino or the sports book or the poker room the payment options? I yeah. mean, how, where does that prioritize yeah. in your I mean, marketing messages? Well, basically, I mean, I've just come back from Argentina and done an analysis on the Ray 8 payments page. That's obviously key to your campaigns converting. Um, and obviously, affiliates, it's, it's very important to affiliates which payment systems the operators have. Um, because otherwise, you're just not going to convert. So um, you need to order your payments page in the order of um, payment systems that work for that country. And... Um, and sorry, what's the rest of the message? Well, I mean, so how are you educating? Where does it fit on your marketing yeah, so priority we list? marketing with, with Ucash. I mean, I use all the payment systems as an affiliate as well. So in the shops where they're going to have the posters, we're going to have presents on the posters, we're going to have presents on the cards, and, um, and do co-branding, helping them as well promote the payment system because obviously it's uh, key to the success of the marketing campaigns, yeah. And Robin, <clears throat> do you see any advantage for affiliates who are in these markets early? Um, going out with that marketing message that, hey, look, there's this thing on, that you could do online, it's called gambling, and actually, you didn't think you could do it from your jurisdiction, um, but, you know, we've got a solution that others don't. Is there, is there some advantage that can be garnered from a lack of, uh, a lack of payment options in various countries? Maybe yeah, there is plenty. Um, one thing you would realize, I reckon a lot of people in here is affiliate, and it's probably experience that when you reach a certain size um, for the operator you really need to play sort of a strategic role for the operator you need to contribute with something they cannot do themselves now, there is uh, a difference in the nature of your businesses in the sense that an operator is accepting a bet while you are marketing um, what the government actually manages to do is that they're spreading a lot of negative propaganda about online gambling raising the um, skepticism in the population. Um, as an affiliate, I touched strategic value, you need to reach new depositing players. At a certain point, you have to reach new depositing players if the operator is going to value you. In a market where people are very skeptical to depositing to online gambling, that could be a bit of a problem, especially if they cannot deposit through uh, traditional methods which they trust. Thus, this is clearly where something like Ucash comes into play. Um, if you can equip people with a Ucash card, they can go through the cashier, they can uh, see how it works. Um, you lower the threshold for people to actually start uh, using a online gaming service. Um, let me be more specific. Uh, 
and just ask you straight out, is SEOing for payment types um, a working acquisition strategy? If I'm out there and I'm promoting gaming as an affiliate, I've got a good number of sites uh, targeting Latin America, I'm ranking pretty well, do I go out there and say, look, you can pay online with, uh, with Ucash. Are people doing that and is it working to get those players into converted players? Um, well, I cannot answer for Latin America, but it's definitely a viable option in the markets we're in. Yeah, for in, in Latin America, it's key that people can deposit in, in cash. You need to mention it in your marketing campaigns um, and make it obvious. Also, another, another thing is mentioning, um, adding in the logo of the shops and the actual point of distribution, because a Latin American person is not going to know who you cash are, but they will know who uh, Rapi Pago or Pago Fati, where the actual point of distribution that they go to, to get the voucher. So that needs to be clear. Um, another thing worth mentioning about, about Argentina is the reason why, people, why it's such a cash market as well. Um, they don't trust banks at all because of the fluctuation in the currency. You can't convert US dollars into pesos. They just keep a, and you can't take pesos out. So it's a very, um, it's a very cash industry for that reason. Another reason is there's, they're looking to charge them a 60% tax. Um, their children, they have to pay for education for their children. They have to pay for their own health care. So for tax reasons, they don't want money in banks and because of the fluctuating currency. So one day, their currency, I've got a friend I'll put it in context, he's had a four million US dollars in a dollar account, and overnight the government said to him that's now worth one million pesos. Really? Yeah, so that's why people don't want to keep money in banks. Yeah, that, that, that's not good at all. We have some more audience questions. <laughs> no. It, so you, you traded four million dollars into one million pesos. Thank you. It's like the worst that's thing that so could ever happen. You know, that's not a good deal. Um, <laughs> Michael. Oh, we had a question in the front. Good. And the payout, how will it happen? Because we're only talking deposit. Yeah. Can I? Go ahead, Diego. Um, Tom, I mean, you, you, could, you could address Sorry, this as I well. But, uh, um, how to, can, can you use Ucash as a payout system yes. rather um, than a pay-in system? We, we have, I mean, t Tom and the, the rest of the, the gambling team at Ucash have developed uh, and signed up with the merchants that so wanted. Um, uh, you cash. Uh, the, 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 it's called payouts. So you have a winning, uh, which is it's, a, it's an excellent question. I mean, people go on about the, the paying in methods and and forget about the cashing out. Um, a merchant will issue. You have winnings of a thousand dollars. A merchant will issue. Okay, in this case, due to the restrictions of value per voucher, you'd get two vouchers of five hundred dollars. Uh, so two you cash vouchers. Uh, at the moment, uh, there are countries like here in the UK, you can go, for example, to the post office and exchange the voucher for cash, s straight out. Uh, the alternative in countries where this is not yet a reality uh, is to get a Ucash out card, which is a MasterCard, uh, obviously for that, as, as a, an individual you need to, 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 to be identified with the, the, the bank that issues the, that card. But that card can only be loaded with Ucash. So you've got your two Ucash uh, vouchers. You load them onto you, uh, into your Ucash out card. And from then on, you can withdraw at an ATM. You can pay online or go to, into a shop, to a restaurant, and just use your MasterCard. As, uh, from an affiliate perspective, <clears throat> you have, we obviously have databases, <clears throat> email databases, and we'll hit those email databases. And oftentimes, you know, you're going to lose a player like your funnel showed at the point where your credit card's going to go through. And sometimes it'll be because you're trying to get a new player through an unregulated market. And that's a more expensive thing for the operator to do because it's going to have to pay somewhere around maybe 8 9% to get a newbie player through um, with a non-coded solution. Um, and oftentimes you're going to get fraud control to say, no, we're not going to let these players through. It's a new player. We don't really know it. We have a lot of worry about chargeback risks. Um, and I suppose with your system, you could hit that database again and uh, say, listen, if your, play, if your payments didn't go through, here's a guaranteed way to get your money in. Yeah. Um, is that happening now with affiliates and um, with operators? Not with, not with affiliates. Um, basically, the, the, the closed loop promotional vouchers that I mentioned is, is we, we previously uh, have only used them with operators but more as a, as a reactivation tool or a conversion tool for their databases. So um, we'll give them an infinite amount of codes. Um, they'll send it out to their LAPS customers, uh, the ones that have, have signed up but not deposited. Um, 
and then they'll, they'll attach a bonus offer to that code. Um, and it's, it's a great reactivation tool. So yeah, taking it the next, next step, giving, it, giving the same product to affiliates, um, there's no reason why it wouldn't work just as well. It seems here that we might have another little affiliate versus operator tension uh, that might brew in the future. Now, if you send your player over, the player tried to deposit, credit card was turned down by, for fraud scrubbing or for whatever else, um, then we went and offered that person a cash payment alternative, a Ucash or another similar system. Um, is, the, is your operator going to credit you as the affiliate, as the person who then went and acquired that player? Or are they going to look at it as, well, actually, this was an internal... Um, this is an internal conversion. The player tried, he went away, and this is, this is kind of a new player coming on board. So that might be something, food for thought, when you're dealing with your, uh, with your affiliate representatives um, and affiliate managers, to just make sure that you're going to get credit when someone switches over from a traditional payment method, which in our case would be something like a, a credit card, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, over into, uh, over into Ucash. Do we have some more questions from the audience? No, I'd like, to ask, I'd like to ask John a question, actually. Um, this system seems to be working on a small scale very nicely. It seems to be working in regulated markets like the UK very nicely. Um, but I'm thinking back to 2002, and I'm thinking about PayPal. And as soon as it becomes prolific, and it works on many different sites, yes, okay, it's not just a gaming product, but um, at what point do you have government interaction saying, actually, you know what, this is really being used for gaming because I'm seeing it on every gaming site as, a, as an option and uh, we don't like that. Now, and I guess the question would be, you know, what's the, uh, what's the uh, a government's uh, likelihood to notice that and then take action against Ucash, the casino or the affiliate? Well, I, I think my view would be to worry about that when it happens. That would be a great problem to have that we've reached the point that Ucash and cash vouchers are widely... Um, prevalent in, 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 these, in these markets. Uh, we'll, cross that, we'll cross that bridge when, when we get to it, but for the moment, uh, markets like Argentina, like Brazil, are, are genuinely gray, gray markets with no prohibitions, no bans on payment processing or ISP blocking. Um, of course, the authorities are going to get more interested in the subject and their attention mm -hmm. is going to be drawn to it. But hopefully, by that stage, you'll have reached a volume of, of business and an and interest coming from the public that they start to look at it in the context of, you know, how, how do we... It, it's another reason to start regulating and legislating rather than trying to, to close it down, to, to capture this market, to tax it. Um, and, 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 you know, that is, that is the trend all across Europe and, and further afield. We're, we're on an irreversible trend towards national licensing regimes, and that is going to happen in Latin America. The only issue is the timing. I just Jackie. wanted to say something about, um, yeah, Chile's completely unregulated. You can really more or less do what you want, not TV, but anything goes. Um, Mexico's, they are actually looking quite closely at Mexico now because um, a drug cartel recently burnt down a casino with 200 people in it, which has brought it to the attention of the government. So. All the offline casinos have, have, have had um, inspections, safety inspections. They did close a few down. So Mexico, you do, B Win do have a national license, but you can market. But I would, in, in that, that sort of market, be be careful and just uh, stick to the online. Well, okay. So I mean, what what are you mainly going for? Are you buying email lists? What are you doing online? Um, well, there's more affiliate traffic in Mexico, Argentina, and Chile. So I'm starting there. I'm not in Brazil at the moment. I will do in a few months. But um, yeah, initially SEO, SEM, um, affiliation, and media buy with tan tangible results. So email marketing, um, co registration, cost per registration. And is Google uh, throughout South America, is Google pretty open to um, uh, well, CPC? Well, you, you can do it. You can do casino AdWords in Mexico. Um, and I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in the other markets. But you have to have somebody that, that can do black hat. Okay. So you just have to be a little bit clever about it. Yes. And these are the, and these are your major marketing tools. Uh, yeah. At the moment, yeah. And Robin, you're finding the same. If, and then, if sorry, if you want to do TV advertising or radio, then um, I would open a site with a dot net and not do it via the dot com. Right. Too. Robin, are you finding something similar? Um, can you ask the question again, sir? Uh, what, what are the tools you're using just yeah. in promotion okay. in, in Latin America? 
Um, I think uh, what we are looking at doing now is that we are actually marketing uh, in a whole lot of mainstream channels. We're making people come to our site, we're making them sign up for the poker site, and we're making them leave their information and such as their username and so on with us. Um, from that point on, we know they're a customer. Um, they just haven't deposited it yet. We have the list, and we can simply contact the player and say, uh, "Here is a pin code. Here is a card." Um, yeah, so we're going after the lists of people we have uh, obtained. Yeah. Another, no. an another strategy that I'm using is offline, online. So people recruiting people offline from the casinos, and, and there's a big agent network in right. places like Argentina and Mexico where it's cash. So using people taking real money off the players, and. Um, and recruiting people physically from the casinos. That's what we were talking about before. I was, you know, I was kind of saying, doesn't that uh, kind of not require at all any type of uh, UCash voucher system? Yeah, absolutely, but it, there's not many people that do that. So if you want volume, you need to use these types of solutions. And again, you need to trust somebody. I mean, I, there are people that will pay you up front for credit and then they, they will distribute to, to their group of players. But to find those people, they don't know you, you're a new brand. Do they trust you? Do you trust them with your money? Well, so on, the, on, on that note, um, operators will pay a hell of a lot to an agent um, for them to collect, the, to collect the funds and then sell back. Um, so if, if you can go one step back and, and then introduce that, that player to Ucash, it negates the, to an extent it will ne negate the need in the future for the, for the agent because this guy can just go to the shop. And uh, the payout is essential as well because mm. that, that's one of the major problems. We've got solutions for the pay-ins. The payouts is, is, is the tougher thing to solve. So the prepay card um, is, is essential for these type of markets as well. Now, I wanted to save this question toward the end, in the, this subject toward the end. Um, the most interesting thing you had on your slideshow to me was um, that you're offering these vouchers in China. Was, that China, was China on the list? China is on the list. Um, How many retail outlets do you have in China? And uh, again, what kind of transaction volume? Are China's, you uh, China's a, uh, a difficult one at the moment. Um, it's uh, an online pin shop. So it's, uh, it's purely an online solution in China. Okay. Um, Walk me through it, how's it work? But basically, you, you go onto Ucash, China's pin shop, um, use your card and deposit, and you get a Ucash voucher. Um, at the moment, well. there are some restrictions on the actual um, Ucash China side. Um, we had a few problems with our um, with our product there, but um, it's uh, it's it's not ideal. It's very similar to, I guess, the the online Baleto solution we've got in Brazil. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's it, we don't have the points of sale at the moment in China. It's purely online. So which of the unregulated markets are you guys most successful and are most proud of your achievements in? I would, can I, um, I, 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 I would say um, Latin America as a whole, well, generally speaking, but I would point out Argentina, Colombia, um, from, my, from my side of the map yeah. anyway. Norway as well, um, until recently Spain, well, st still Spain, Spain I guess. Spain is not regulated. Um, Germany. Okay. Um, so, as I say, it's not just about the economic reasons for, for or the legal, the, the, the full reasons. It's, it's um, in, in Germany, for example, it's cultural. People, people like to use cash instead of cards. In Germany, you've got a lot of competition, though. There's a lot of other cash to yep. card kind of systems. Um, but I, I was surprised when I was in Germany to go into a train station and see that I could put some you know, money into a machine and get my card printed out and then go and use it online. I thought it was a very organized distribution system. I'm pretty, pretty impressed with it. Um, do we have any further questions for the panel? No? Uh, yes, great. How about Greece? <laughs> uh, the Greek market. Are you in the Greek market? I don't run Greece. Greece, uh, yeah, we, we've recently launched in Greece, actually. We've got uh, around 2,000 points for sale now. Um, I know it's, uh, it's, it's a great market for us, or will be a great market for us, and, and we're looking to use this affiliate strategy to, uh, to really, um, I suppose, uh, kick increase start. awareness of, yeah, and kickstart the, the, the product over there. Um, there are a few other cash, cash solutions uh, in Greece at the moment that do very well, and, and it's only because we haven't had the estate there until recently um, that I guess that, that we haven't had the same. 
Um, so we're investing a lot. At the moment, it's um, the product's slightly different. It's a scratch card at the point of sale. Um, the electronic networks will come um, within the next next quarter. Okay. <clears throat> so a growing market. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Greece is Greece is certainly a. Um, it, it's going into a transitional period as it's um, some new legislation coming along. Um, it's a wildly unpredictable market and in, in the economic climate to do, to do business in. And only just over the Christmas period, the Greek government announced that uh, it wanted operators um, who'd been in Greece to pay all back taxes uh, over the previous two years, and they wanted them paid within seven days, um, which I'm sure troubled a few executives Christmas holidays. But uh, my understanding, and again, you know, I'm not a, not a Greek lawyer, but that there are um, provisions relating to um, the participation in online gaming through, must be through financial institutions legally established and operating in Greece. And uh, there's talk about a, sp a, a special code to be defined by the regulator. So uh, Greek, Greece is, is, is lucrative. It's one to keep working at. It's wildly unpredictable, but there's some difficult issues coming with the new new uh, regulatory regime. It's a good market, Greece. But also with agent networks, am I correct? <coughs> is there a fairly well-established agent network throughout Greece? Yep. Well, as, as far as I'm aware, I know um, a lot of our operators, um, a lot of their, their business in, in, in Greece um, definitely comes through men up cash on the ground. Yep. Um, any further questions? No? If not, thank you very much to the panel.